Howdy guys, Jimmy Song here. I wanted to talk a little bit about how Bitcoin makes society anti-fragile. Um, so one of the things that's pretty obvious in society today is that we have a lot of big institutions. We have big government, we have big companies, we have big just everything. And, uh, and what's crazy about these big companies and governments and stuff is that they are extremely fragile, um, largely because of their bigness. Uh, if, you, if you have, uh, you know, a CEO in charge of some company, um, they can make one wrong decision and their entire company could collapse or it could collapse under its own weight of rent seekers that are in that company or, you know, um, it can collapse in many different ways. Um, what Bitcoin does is it makes things smaller. And I'll explain exactly why. Uh, a lot of these giant corporations and government in particular uh, get to spend the first inflated money. So when inflation happens, essentially you're creating new money. Um, the ones that get to spend first get most of the benefit. So if there, uh, suppose we're in an economy uh, where there's only $100. If I am the government and I print 20, new dollars and I spent those 20 new dollars um, to somebody, it's going to take a while before the inflation is felt. The, it's going to take at least like three or four hops um, until, you know, uh, somebody figures out there's there's more money in circulation and therefore they should be devalued relative um, to the amount of goods that are out there. That's what happens with and why government is so bloated and inefficient because they get to print money and they get the first fruits of that money if you will um banks in large part get the get to spend it right after the federal government because um they essentially get to get loans for free and they they also get to participate in money printing through fractional reserve so every dollar that you deposit, they can print or loan out about $10 um, in aggregate. Uh, that's a lot more money. This is why they can, you know, um, you know, take a, take $100 in savings, uh, put out $1,000 in loans at like, and the difference uh, in savings to the loan percentage might be like 2%. Uh, but you know, two percent on a thousand dollars is twenty bucks. So they're making like twenty percent on your hundred dollars, uh, which is kind of remarkable if you think about it. But that's this is why they can afford big buildings and ninety-seven vice presidents and whatnot. Um, so bank, banks get that. Um, large corporations also have access to very very cheap money, and and this is why they're also very very bloated. Um, and you can't get them unless you are a certain scale. Uh, so as a result, what you get it, it, when when certain entities in a society have a major advantage over everybody else is that you can be uh, you can afford to be extremely inefficient. And this is the reality in every large company and government bureaucracy is that they are horribly inefficient. And this is pretty much self-evident. I, I, and, you know, anyone anyone uh, in government will tell you that um, or you can go to the DMV and find out how efficient they are um, they're not very efficient right like a, a, any any McDonald's is way more efficient than a, a, a DMV um, and and most uh, you know like most large corporations are efficient in certain things but horribly inefficient in all sorts of other things um, any management consultant will tell you, you can probably fire like half the people in any large corporation and not have anything bad done to them um, other than, you know, have to de deal with severance and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that's what happens with fiat money is that because, uh, you know, government banks and large businesses get early access to this money, they can afford to be horribly inefficient, which they more or less are. Um, what happens with hard money? What happens with sound money? Well, what happens is they don't have that spigot anymore. And think about that. That means that all of the inefficiency that they have, they can't have anymore. And, they, and a large of that inefficiency comes because of their largeness. 
They can't afford to be that large. It's extremely difficult to coordinate 10,000 people. You know, um, like a, a Citibank has like 50,000 employees uh, and they have a, like a whole room of people that still process faxes. I mean, think about that, like how inefficient a fax is. And to make it make things worse, they, they like put those orders into a mainframe computer. Like think about how inefficient that is or, you know, how how you can automate that away. But they choose not to because they don't need to. And they are inherently very conservative, um, you know, like they're bankers. They're very conservative. They, they don't want to change anything. So you, you have this uh, this these behemoths that are sort of propped up by fiat money. And what, when hard money comes in, they'll all get wiped out. Now, the reason why we have like a lot of these crises, like in 2008 and so on, is because all of these behemoths are extremely fragile. And they, they've been propped up by the fiat money. When you have hard money, you have local volatility. And this was clear in the late 1800s and stuff. They had these little panics that would go you know, last like a few months. Uh, but when you have fragile things, uh, they might work for a while, but you have catastrophic failures um, like the Great Depression or either of the world wars and so on. So what Bitcoin brings is local volatility, but ultimately anti-fragility. Because when you have local volatility, that kicks out all of the inefficient people. That kicks out all of the inefficient businesses. And that has some profound implications. Uh, you know, when, when you have local volatility, um, you know, anyone that can't cut it has to get out or get better. Um, hopefully they do the latter and that's what survives. It's, it's a very efficient mechanism for, you know, weeding out the crud. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing because, you know, you can either try again and be resilient about it or you can, uh, you know, go into some other field where you're going to do better anyway. Uh, and that makes society more anti-fragile because people are adding goods and services that people need and there's real competition and, uh, you know, real meritocracy and so on. Anyway, hopefully that helps you. Um, please tell me what you think of this idea that Bitcoin makes society anti-fragile through being sound money in the comments below. Thank you. And this song is done.